Hello and welcome to MMA Nut Real Talk. I'm your host, Sebastian Vendel Martinez. I've been a reporter and writer for MMA Nut since 2012, and this is where I give my unedited, unscripted thoughts about uh, all kinds of goings on in MMA and combat sports. So there was definitely quite a bit uh, going on this weekend, which we will get to, and we will do it in chronological order because it's time to give the Euro MMA scene some love. Uh, Cage Warriors. Cage Warriors 106, Knight of Champions. Uh, For those unlucky few of you uh, uh, who are a bit unaware, this was quite possibly Cage Warriors' best, uh, best card ever. Uh, It featured not one, not two, not five, but six uh, title fights, which is, un- I mean, I've personally never heard of that many title fights. Uh, but yeah, there was a lot, a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, the biggest story is, of course, the, the main event between uh, Scott Nuss, Ross Houston, the reigning champ and interim champ, uh, Nicholas Dalby from uh, Denmark, former UFC fighter who some of you may recognize. This was a bloodbath. From a, like in the very first round, Houston uh, used a slicing elbow, chopped up, uh, uh, opened a cut in Dolby's uh, forehead, and it was. I mean, it wasn't like necessarily in a super bad spot, but it was just like it was big. Uh, and then I think it was in the second round, Dolby connected with a uh, really, really hard strike that. Uh, very clearly broke Houston's nose, so his nose was just gushing blood, and then they started grappling, and it was just, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was a literal bloodbath, uh, because that's actually kind of what happened. Referee Mark Goddard made the, in my opinion, correct call, completely correct call, uh, to call off a fight due to, like, like, I mean, they were slipping and sliding around in their own blood, and it's this is a kind of fight that like, if my relatives see this, this is exactly what I'm going to have to defend myself from uh, the next family gathering or Christmas or something like that. Uh, they'll they'll t- start talking about that fight and, uh, yeah, I'll never hear the end of it. Uh, but it's a shame that the fight ends the way it does, obviously, and this perhaps creates some problems for, uh, for Dolby in particular, who I'm sure the UFC were kind of looking at. Uh, as we are planning on coming to Copenhagen in September. I'm sure that if he won this fight, unified with titles, I and I think he had, what was it, two or three straight wins before this, I'd be pretty sure that he'd be uh, given a UFC contract. Now, he has since suggested that uh, they have a rematch, because everyone wants to see a rematch. Houston, Dolby, Cage Warriors for fans, everyone wants to see a rematch, because it was a great fight, uh, but just, you know, unfortunately ended uh, the way it did. Dolby suggested them having uh, a rematch in uh, in Copenhagen at the UFC card. And I say yes, that is the exactly right call to make. Um, this fight, I mean, for the blood alone, uh, will, will have brought a lot of attention to it. Uh, I feel that uh, Dolby, he, he he does deserve a second shot in the UFC. He has been doing very well outside of it. Uh, his only loss outside of the UFC was a close split decision to current UFC fighter Carlo Pedrosoli Jr. Uh, <clears throat> and I say let these welterweights, perhaps uh, uh, you know, some somewhere on the undercard or something like that, let them both make their UFC debut. Give them a shot. You can maybe even have like a special clause in a contract that like only the winner gets the UFC contract, perhaps something like that. Because I mean, maybe the UFC aren't that interested in signing two debut, like two uh, new fighters uh, who are coming off of a no contest, which is understandable. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, the UFC should uh, sign both these guys for a rematch and let them uh, let them duke it out. And the winner will be the I mean they'll be in the UFC, so they won't you know have their Cage Warriors titles on the line. But the winner will definitely be the the unofficial uh, Cage Warriors welterweight champ, undisputed. Uh, aside from that, uh, Jai Herbert. Wow, uh, we, you know coming into this 
co-main event, the, the vacant lightweight title was on the line. It was Jack Grant between Jai Herbert. I've seen Jack Grant uh, fight a couple times before. Very exciting style. I know that Cage Warriors were very high on him too. And I think this is the fight that they kind of like thought that uh, oh, they would build up uh, Grant as the next star. Jai Herbert spoiled that party. He looked fantastic in the striking. Uh, he just, he truly found his range and his rhythm really early and just picked Grant apart, who did not have an answer for the striking. Uh, for another Dane, Mads Blunel, also a former UFC fighter, uh, he lined up his third straight submission victory uh, when he tapped out the former champion Dean Truman with a Japanese necktie, his second straight Japanese necktie victory. Uh, Burnell looked fantastic, I think he's a very hot candidate for uh, coming back to the, the Copenhagen card, uh, the UFC Copenhagen. I would actually be surprised if they don't re-sign Mats Burnell because sure he lost two out of his three fights in the UFC, but his third loss, I mean he was dominating the fight against Arnold Allen, who is a, a, you know, a really hot contender uh, who's fighting Gilbert Melendez this week. Uh, and it was one of those, I mean, Arnold, had it gone to a decision, uh, Allen, he would have lost, uh, you know, easily. Uh, Burnell, he made a, a stupid mistake and, and he paid for it, but I think it's weird if the UFC would cut him despite such a strong performance. Either way, I think Burnell would be, uh, will be coming back to the UFC uh, for uh, the Copenhagen card. Uh, we also said James uh, Webb versus uh, Nathias Frederick. Unfortunately, uh, a fight marred by controversy. I, I thought it was a very fun, entertaining fight, uh, very different fighting styles. Uh, Webb more sort of methodical and more grappling focused, whereas uh, Frederick was much more of a striker and when it did go to the ground uh, it wasn't as much technique as it kind of was like uh, just muscling out and ex exploding out of these situations uh, he did pile drive web which ended up uh, uh, getting a point deduction and then his behavior towards the referee mark Arder, i thought was pretty pretty bad too uh, we also had samir fadin knock out uh, sam crazy to win the flyweight title and we had Lithuanian Modestas Bukowskas defeat Norwegian Martin Hamlet uh, via strikes from fourth round to claim the vacant light heavyweight title. And so, yeah, I mean, Cage Warriors, it's free on Fight Pass, I'm pretty sure. So if you're not watching it already, be sure to, I mean, check it out. It is a quality promotion that's produced stars like Michael Bisping, Dan Harding, you know, uh, Dan Hardy, Joanna Janjajic, Conor McGregor, perhaps. Um, so I would definitely say keep your guys' eyes on Cage Warriors because I do think we will see some future UFC stars come out of there sooner rather than later. Moving on, we had uh, <coughs> uh, UFC on ESPN3, also known as UFC Minneapolis. Francis Ngannou, uh, wow, I mean that guy has scary power, scary power. Uh, I mean, I, w I did uh, pick uh, Junior Dos Santos to win this fight, as I'm sure people will be very quick to remind me of. Uh, he made, in my opinion, a very tactical error. He was too... I don't know if it was in... I don't know really what it was, but I f like he overextended himself in a very non-technical way, which led to the counter shot that knocked him out. Uh, Dos Santos himself has said that, you know, he, he gave Nganu like a free victory. In some senses he did that because that was a, a pretty bad move. Uh, just kind of like throw, throw in such a, a sloppy attack uh, against such a powerful, dangerous striker. Uh, either way, this was, I mean, the sound of that overhand. Oh my god. I am so glad that I am not a UFC heavyweight because I mean, fighting Francis and Gano, it's like it's like fighting death. I mean, good luck, good luck. Uh, so this puts Ngannou with three straight wins, and I'd say, I mean, I don't know why Dana White is being very vague about the, you know, about you know, we'll see. It, it's classic, you know, Dana will see what happens, White. That's so classic, uh, and I understand. Obviously, you, you can't 
pre like you can't book a title fight now between Nganu and the winner because we don't know who the winner is. But I still feel like you can kind of guarantee someone's position, which is the only fair thing to do here. I mean, Nganu has three straight knockout wins, two of them over former UFC heavyweight champions. Uh, it would be illogical to give anyone else. I mean, even if it's Stipe, even if Stipe would beat DC uh, and it's a rematch, is it the hottest rematch in, in the history of a heavyweight division? No, but I mean, still, I feel like Nganu has done enough now and is... Uh, in his away time and with his uh, during his win streak to to earn himself a rematch nobody else is more deserving of it than him so i don't know but i'm pretty sure we will see him get it anyway joseph benavidez uh once again knocked out juicy formiga and truly cemented his place at the top of the division uh he is the last person to defeat reigning flyweight and bantamweight champion uh, henry cejudo so Unfortunately, Cejudo now he is away an in injury, but I do think that the first title defense he makes will be at flyweight, which means that Aljamain Sterling and Peter Jan can fight for a number one contender spot, which I think would be a fantastic fight. Uh, <coughs> Damien Maya, like I, like I kind of predicted, would be a little too much for Anthony Rocco Martin, who. Uh, I mean, it's it's hard. Damian Maya is a tall order. Uh, honestly, I thought that was not a good fight for uh, for Rocco Martin to begin with. I just feel that like he his distance management would not really work uh, against Maya, and yeah, it didn't. Um, but I mean, it, it was still not a bad performance. I mean, one of the judges scored it 28-28 draw. So I mean, Martin, he, he had some good moments, definitely. But his four-fight winning streak is now is now broken. But I do see him coming back stronger and better from this. I mean, this was the first time he truly faced someone of that championship caliber. And, uh, you know, you don't always win those fights. Uh, sometimes you need a loss to be able to sort of figure out the holes in your own game. That's kind of what I see happening here. I think uh, Anthony Rocco Martin will be back and uh, better than ever. Uh, Vince Pichel surprised me. Damn, I, I thought uh, Roosevelt Roberts was gonna... Uh, was gonna pick... Uh, was gonna win here, but... Uh, <sighs> It's like Vince Pichel, one of those guys you can't really count out. I mean, he's he's just, I think he's won five out of his last six fights now. And he was good in McClinch. He was really, really good in McClinch. Uh, the, the defensive knees and stuff like that that he threw, it was just, uh, it was a joy to see. Uh, and uh, congrats to Vince Pichel. Drew Dober defeated uh, Marco Polo Reyes by a uh, knockout of the first round, or TKO. Again, like I thought, I mean... Polo Reyes, he, he kind of leaves himself a bit open, I feel. He's a, a little bit on the sloppier side, and I just felt that Dober was, I mean, he's a powerful guy. You can tell, if you just look at his jawline, you can tell he's, he, you know, he packs a lot of power. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure which spinning back kick is worse, Chris Weidman's or Paul Craig's, because, ugh, you know, just don't throw spinning back kicks just like that because it's way too easy to get countered if you do it carelessly alonzo manyfield uh i was at least right in picking there uh he finished uh, paul craig via brutal knockout i will say though that the extra shot afterwards for manyfield was was reprehensible uh i thought that was really i mean it was even after that herb dean dove in so i mean I don't expect the result to change or anything like, like that, but I would not be surprised if the commission perhaps uh, took some kind of, uh, if they fine him or something like that. I would actually be okay with that because that extra shot that he threw after the Dean had clearly stopped the fight, it, it was it was bad to see. And uh, yeah, I mean, regardless, Craig, he seemed okay afterwards. So, I mean, it's not necessarily a big deal. But you don't want to see stuff like that in MMA. I mean, if a if referee has, you know, dove in and stopped, stopped the fight, then stop the strikes. I understand, you know, you're caught in a moment. It's very easy to get stuck. This is just his, uh, I believe, second fight in the UFC. So he's still a little bit new. He's still getting used to some of that. Uh, so let's perhaps give him the benefit of a doubt. 
Uh, Ricardo Ramos uh, picked up win over Journey Newson. Your boy Eric Anders got exactly what he needed. Uh, he knocked out uh, Vinicius Moreira in the first round, and nice to see him return to the win column. I mean, he has had a, a tough run. This broke a three fight losing streak for him. Uh, and he's just a fun character, you know, he's uh, he's up to, you know, he's up, always up for a good scrap, whether it's in his best interest or not. Uh, so, yeah, overall, uh, very fun event. Uh, Jared Gordon also had a, a, a really good win over Dan Moret uh, and a very good post-fight speech, which I would recommend checking out. <laughs> So, who should some of these guys fight then? I mean, I've already made it pretty clear that I feel Nganu and uh, Benavides really have done enough to, you know, earn their, uh, uh, earn their title shot, but that still does leave us with a couple of others. I mean, we've got Damian Maya, for example, who beat uh, Anthony Rocco Martin. Take a look at the rankings. Uh, Damian Maya is ranked on t at 12th place, and there's not a lot of like obvious uh, fights for him. Uh, I mean, I guess we could say maybe uh, his countryman Elizo Zaleski de Santos, uh, who is has looked really, really, really good. Uh, I gotta say. I don't believe he's booked for a fight. Let's see here. Yeah, he's, that's right. He's coming off of a very quick win over uh, Curtis Melander. And uh, yeah, I mean, I would say, why not uh, Elizo Dos Santos versus uh, uh, versus Damian Maya? I mean, that would be a good test for uh, for Dos Santos who. It's safe to say that he's he's earned himself, uh, you know, a top twelve or a top uh, ten, a top fifteen fighter because I mean he's five straight wins now, and you, I mean you got to do something. I mean he made such quick work of Millinder that uh, it, it's it's only logical to give him uh, a more highly ranked fighter. So yeah, I mean why not why not Maya? I'd be down for that. We also have. Right, Vince Pichel and Drew Dober, you know, why not let those guys fight it out? Uh, they're both lightweights, uh, both coming off of wins, uh, both had losses previously. Yeah, I, I, it's kind of staring me right in the face, but I, yeah, why not uh, Vince Pichel, Drew Dober? I think that could be a really fun fight. I'm in Alonzo Minifield. Oh, light heavyweight, you know, it's it's an interesting time in light heavyweight because it's very easy to get moved up the ranks, very easy to fall out of them. It's, I feel like there's a lot more space there when we're on like talent stacked divisions, like, you know, welterweight, featherweight, lightweight. Is it time to give him someone in the top 15? Mm, I don't know. I, st I still feel like there's a lot of very strong and like promising uh, light heavyweights on their way up. I mean, the, the three biggest ones who uh, uh, I, I've mentioned several times, Johnny Walker, Alexander Rakic, and uh, Dominic Reyes are the three up and coming, uh, uh, three up and coming sort of like rising stars in light heavyweight. That's the way I see it. <laughs> And someone like that, I would probably be, be a little bit better reserved. I mean, Misha Sirkunov could be an okay fight, but he's actually booked for a fight in uh, UFC Vancouver. So let's just take a quick look at the UFC light heavyweight division, see if we can find a, you know, a proper good uh, opponent for Alonzo Manifield. He's a 2-0 now. You know, Ryan Spann would not be a bad idea. He's also coming off of a quick knockout over uh, Antonio Rogério Nogueira. That would not would not be a bad uh, fight. Uh, Magomed Ankalaev could also work. Uh, he's coming off of a win over Klitsen Abro in Prague. I mean, yeah, 
I would say that those are probably the two best um, <clears throat> candidates right now. Uh, there's not really anyone else who I necessarily, that, you know, someone that jumps out and, you know, sticks out in that way. So, yeah, why not uh, Magomed Ankalaev or uh, Ryan Spann? I say them. either one of those is, uh, is a good fight. Uh, or, we, I mean, the Polish, actually, uh, uh, Michal, these, these Polish names, it's, they're too hard. Michal Oleksijuk. See, I have, I have, my stepsisters are half Polish, so I really, I gotta step up my game there. Uh, step it up, right? Step, yeah. I'm sorry, that was terrible. Anyway, moving on. Uh, big news in the middleweight division as Kelvin Gastelum uh, is out of surgery. He's ready to come back and he has accepted a fight with uh, Jack uh, Jack Hermanson. Now, this is not a UFC fight offer. It has just been Hermanson campaigning uh, to face... Uh, Gastelum at the, in the main event at UFC Copenhagen, which is a solid main event and it's a perfect one for the UFC's debut in Denmark. So on Twitter, Kelvin Gastelum writes, My timetable for my return in Saudi Octagon is November. No doubt about it. Jack with Joker, MMA, Jack Hermanson is the fight to make. So he's definitely down for facing Hermanson, but November, UFC's debut in Denmark is September 27th. So this means that unless he can speed up his return time we're not going to see this fight as the main event at uh, ufc copenhagen which would be a big shame uh, i personally would love to see that fight um, but i do think that even if they have to find another fight to put as a main event at ufc copenhagen this is definitely the most logical matchup right now at middleweight uh, i mean Obviously, we're going to have a unification bout now between uh, Whitaker and uh, Israel Adesanya. Uh, Yoel Romero already fought twice for the title, didn't even make weight the second time. I would not be entirely surprised if he perhaps is considering light heavyweight, considering some of the weight cut issues. Um, but so yeah, you can't give Romero Rockhold, ranked at number three. He's moving to light heavyweight as well. And then we got number four, Gastelum, and number five, Helmansson. After that, we got Jacare Souza, Chris Weidman, Paulo Costa. Oh, that's right. Romero is booked to face Paulo Costa. So I guess the only... I mean, even if Romero wins in devastating fashion, I, you know, I can't see him getting a title shot after, after that. And if Costa wins... I could see people making the case. But A, I do not see him winning over Yo Romero and two I still think that's not necessarily enough uh, I just feel that Gastelum and Halmanson they they're they've done this a little bit more there's a reason they're more highly ranked and uh, yeah I say those guys should face each other if it is in in November or if it's in the main event at UC Copenhagen regardless that is you know he couldn't be more right that is the fight to make um, I would actually have Helmanson winning that fight, and it's it all comes down to pace, uh, pace here and movement, uh, because he's got that weird kind of in and out jumpy striking style, which does throw a lot of people off. Now, Gastelum obviously he's got a lot of power in his hands. We saw him knock out Michael Bisping, and if he connects properly with, uh, against Helmanson, he can definitely stop him early. But we know that. Uh, Gastelum has, you know, proper conditioning, but he does get tired. Uh, and I see Helmelson as having just a, you know, a slightly bigger gas tank there. Uh, I think that the grappling will be interesting because while I think that Gastelum probably has slightly better wrestling, uh, at least when it comes to takedowns, I'd say when it comes to submission ability, Jack Helmanson is more dangerous. I mean, he was close to tapping out Jacare Souza, who's one of the best grapplers in the entire UFC. Uh, so I think this would be a close fight. It would be a tough fight. I'm actually not super happy about it because I like really like both of them and I don't want to see them lose uh, or see one of them lose. But uh, 
Yeah, I, I think that is the fight to make, and I do think Helmelson actually comes out on top there. We saw now latest, I mean, short notice against Jacare Souza, what he could accomplish. I think uh, it's time, but uh, yeah, we're gonna see the Joker shoot to the top. And uh, yeah, so those were pretty much the biggest stories uh, for today, Monday the 1st of July. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Let me know who you guys think wins between Helmanson and Gastelum. Who do you think uh, some of the winners at UFC uh, Minneapolis should face and so on. Let me know what you think. Maybe a special topic we should talk about in the future. I'm very open to that kind of stuff as well. And uh, yeah, so this was Sebastian Van Martinez, MMA News, here with MMA News Real Talk. And I'll catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.